I have the pudendal problem and the back problem. And I, uh, like I say, I've seen several uh, facilities and they've uh, indicated I started back in uh, well, this first one in 2019. I went to a facility and they told me uh, I needed to uh, have a laminectomy L34, L45, um, decompressed 34 and uh, uh, 4 or 5 possible and L2 possibly. Uh, then I went to another facility and they recommended an L34 with a Coflex. And so I went back to the first facility uh, to have the laminectomy done and they said, well, we've decided now that uh, you have rotary scoliosis and uh, Anything that we do would call would have to require a large uh, instrumented fusion. So, uh, kind of confused. <laughs> well, uh, why? You ask one question and get five answers. You find that confusing? What's wrong uh, with you? I, I, I'm a little slow. <laughs> um, I want to reframe the way you're thinking about your back. Okay. So we'll. You're thinking about the response. You're thinking about your back as having a problem for which there is one right answer. And unfortunately, you picked the wrong back. Thanks, mom and dad. You got the wrong back for, for that situation. There is not one answer to your issues. And by the way, it's issues, plural. So we're going to talk about that in a second. Okay. I want to talk about with you the good, the bad, and the ugly, but I want to start with the good. Okay. Were you on that bike for exercise for 40 years? Yes. Okay, yeah, that's what saved you. That may have that may have dinged up your pudendal nerve, but you got a lot of core strength riding the bike, and it sounds like you're an endurance type of athlete. I can see that you've got a lean frame, and those are the things that kept you going despite you having scoliosis. I'm going to share my screen with you so you can see your MRI. Okay. And that's what I'm going to show you right here. This is a view of you, and we're looking right down the middle. So these are your lungs. This right. is your spine. These are your hips. See the ball of your right hip? Yes. And the socket of your right hip, and here's your left hip. And your hips, I'm uh, pleased to say, don't look bad because sometimes that groin pain can be hip pain, but these hips don't don't look too bad. But what I do see on your spine, these bot these squares, they're hard to see, but these are the vertebrae, the bones. Yeah. And the vertebrae should line up up and down in this plane, but they don't. They're like this. Right. And that's the scoliosis. But God, you have like the most minor scoliosis in the history of the world. It's a very slight curve. It doesn't look bad at all. And Good. a guy like you who's a stud, you've been doing your exercises your whole life on the bike. You got enough muscle to support that curve. I really don't think that's your issue. So right. the idea that you should have a fusion because technically your back has scoliosis, although that is not technically incorrect, it is technically wahoo nuts. Okay. <laughs> like, those fusion surgeries take a year to recover as an adult, and you do it because you can't breathe or you're becoming paralyzed, or you don't do it when you're out there walking four miles a day. I mean, that's that's like saying, uh, hey, can you help me with this thumbtack? Bring a sledgehammer. Right. You know, you're like, no, that's nuts. So there are a bunch of options that you've been given. And the first one, fusion, take it off the list. That's crazy. Okay. That's Great. not an issue. That's not an issue for you. Now, there are a couple other problems that we need to talk about some more. This is like a bad relationship. We're just going to talk about your problems. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so here's here's the rest of your MRI. And keep in mind, you got the world's most mild scoliosis. But we've also got something going on right here. These are the bones of the spine. Here's the L5 square. Here's yes. the L4. Here's the L3. And here's the spinal canal. The white is the nerve, is the fluid, and the dark are the nerve roots. And you don't have to be a brain surgeon like I am to see that this is narrow. Yes. Right? That, that pinches in there. And then this pinches in here. 
But Bill, it's complicated because of the scoliosis. Because your, your spine is shifting in and out of the plane that the MRI is done in. So we got to look at this image over here. See this green line? Yes. This tells us the plane that we're going to see here. And don't worry about all that stuff on the left. In fact, I'm just going to get rid of it. This is what I want you to focus on. See this donut? I do. I hope you're not hungry. We're going to be talking about donuts. So this is <laughs> this white. Oh, I'm getting close. I'm getting there. The white here is the fluid and the dark is your spinal cord. And let's watch it as we go down through your spine. Here, we don't see that donut hole anymore. We see a bunch okay. of dots. And that's because your spinal cord has transitioned into your nerve roots. So we're down in the lumbar spine. See how this is like a triangle? Yes. And before it was a donut? Yes. That That is called stenosis or narrowing. Yes. And so you've got stenosis, and I call that mild to moderate stenosis there. And then as we keep going down, uh-oh, we're getting here to where there's not much spinal canal left. Right, I see that. That's severe stenosis, and this is your L3-4 level. And then as we keep going down, this is another severely stenotic level, and, but not quite as bad, but bad, but not quite as bad. And this is your L4-5. Okay. All right, so what you've got, sir, and then see this on the right, see this line? Yes. That is a swollen facet joint. So you have three problems. Okay. And um, I'm going to tell them to you in order. Number one is scoliosis, which is not bad, and we're not going to think about fusion. Number two is spinal stenosis, which is narrowing, and you've got it at two levels, at the 3-4 and at the 4-5. And then the third thing is you've got arthritis of the lumbar spine, facet arthropathy. Now you're walking four miles a day, you're swimming, your arthropathy is not bad enough to keep you down. It's not good either, right. but it's not bad enough to keep you down. The treatment for arthropathy like that is a diagnostic medial branch block followed by radiofrequency ablation. Have you had any of that? I have not. So that, I had the uh, injections, epidural injections. Yeah, you don't need any. Are you having, are you pregnant? No, not today. <laughs> Not today. You don't need any more epidurals. Epidurals yeah. for pregnancy. You don't need epidurals. What you need, if you need anything for your back pain, would be to get diagnostic medial branch block. And I'd encourage you to go on my YouTube channel and, and watch the videos on that or hit my website, bestpracticehealth.tv, and look right. that stuff up. So diagnostic medial branch block followed by radiofrequency ablation. But that being said, at some point in your life, you're going to have to have a laminectomy to open up the stenosis because you're just too damn young not to. Okay. It's just going to get worse as you get older. So that yeah. guy who, the ones who told you that you needed the laminectomy and then they threw in the coflex and then they threw in the fusion. No, what you need is the laminectomy. You're going to need two operations in your life. Now you need it at L3-4. Sometime in the future, it's going to get worse at the lower level, the L4-5. You're eventually going to need that one done too. But don't. I wouldn't get them done at the same time. I would just get the L3-4 done. Find a minimally invasive spinal surgeon who does a metrix laminectomy. Metrix is the name of the retraction tube that they can operate through. Get that done in a minimally invasive fashion. Minimally invasive laminectomy at L3-4 with a metrix uh, micro laminectomy, that's what you need. Okay. If you still have back pain, then you need to see a pain doctor about radiofrequency ablation. Once a year, you should get an MRI. And if that lower level starts to get too narrow, then you're going to need to have that. That's going to trigger the next laminectomy. And that would be the same type as the L34? Yes, sir. Exactly the same. Minimum so, invasive. Yeah. So don't be. Don't be so all that other stuff that they talked about, coflex, fusion, all these other things are options. And the question becomes in a case like yours, well, what is the best option? 
given the scoliosis, the best option is the traditional one. And that the scoliosis makes this, you're at risk that when they do the laminectomy, they'll make your scoliosis unstable. It almost never happens. You're too strong. I don't think it's going to happen to you. You're too strong right. for that. Of all the people I would worry about, you'd be at the bottom of my list. So I, okay. I don't think you worry about that. I think you focus on finding a really great, minimally invasive uh, neurosurgeon or orthopedic spine surgeon who can do a metrics laminectomy for you. And you said, where do you live in Arkansas? Uh, Fort Smith. Okay. I don't know Fort Smith. Um, what you want to do? I'm close to Northwest Arkansas, like Fayetteville, Rogers, Springdale. Okay, what you want to do is Google uh, uh, neurosurgeons or spine surgeons near me, make a list of all of them, look on their websites and look for one that says minimally invasive. Call that office and say, do they do that through the metrics METRX tube? Is that minimally invasive through a microscope? If the answer is yes, make an appointment, go see them and get done. Okay. If he all tells right. you you need a fusion, tell him you picked the wrong doctor. If he tells you you need a, you should, I mean, you should listen to your doctor, not me. I'm not your doctor, but I, I just think you want to, you want to find someone who gives the option that you want to have. So that, that would be the option if I were you that I would take. Okay. So do the L3, uh, four and then, uh, or L2, three, and then later on, if it's a problem, have the second one. Have the L3, four, see how you do. That's a 30 to 45 minute operation. It's outpatient. They can do it in a surgery center. You should be back in the pool within a week and back on the bike within a month. You know, it's not not that big a deal. See how you feel after. If you're feeling good, then go ahead and um, do uh, nothing. And then if the years go by, a year from now, get that surveillance MRI. If that hole down below at the lower level is starting to narrow, then you're going to have to have it done too. Might this relieve some of my pudendal uh, pain? I don't think so. Okay, so I've just damaged nerves from sitting on the bicycle seat for so long. I mean, if it's not your hip, then that's probably what it is. And there really is no good treatment for that. The um, There are some peripheral nerve specialists in the world, but to be honest, I, I would try all, I'm sure they're trying you on Neurontin and Lyrica and all the medications that's first. Yeah, yeah. Uh, those, man, those medications are just hell, but um, I would try. Can't do work. It. Yeah. yeah. We'll stay off the bike. Yeah. 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 If I can get to where I can swim, I can survive as long as I have something to do. Yeah. Well, swimming is the answer for you for sure. Get in the pool. It, it hurts right now when I reach the twisting. It, it really bothers. It, it's painful. Yeah. Well, um, use the kickboard to strengthen yeah. when you're flared up like that and you're struggling, use the kickboard to uh, continue your aerobic and your leg strength. And at least you get some exercise because then there's no turning, right? The other thing you can try to do is get a snorkel. And um, you ever swim with a snorkel? I do. Yeah, yeah. well, you shouldn't be, are you, you shouldn't be reaching much with the snorkel because you're not, you're not reaching to breathe, right? So you're just straight. Yes. Well, something to consider. It still bothers me, but maybe when, once I have that surgery, maybe that'll help that part of it also. That is going to best be relieved by the radiofrequency ablation, and that's done by a best pain doctor. So that you know, that's a separate issue, and you may want to pursue that pain doctor now. Um, so you're looking for one who's board certified in anesthesia or physical medicine and rehab. In your case, because of the scoliosis, I might emphasize the physical medicine and rehab pain management doctor. So you want them to be board certified in physical medicine and rehab. That's called a physiatrist. And then you want them to be um, to be uh, board to also be certified in pain management. So that's the focus of their work. That's the kind of doctor you're looking for. Okay. All right. So maybe do that first before I have the uh, surgery on the back? I would do both. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. And so that with the surgery that you're speaking of shouldn't cause the instability in my back then. The risk. Yeah. It's a risk, but I think given your good muscle strength and prior conditioning, the risk is low. And that's also why you want to get minimally invasive. It makes the risk even the lowest it can be. It's going to be a disaster if it happens, but it's very unlikely to happen. And Bill, you don't have a choice. 
you're right. narrowing your narrowing is just going to get worse and every year it gets worse eventually you're not going to be able to walk there was a study recently that showed a 35 percent higher incidence of death within a year of people who chose not to have laminectomy for severe stenosis cowboy that's you that's severe yeah. you know you're not going to die you're too healthy but but you know it, it the the magnitude of this is life or death that's what i'm trying to say yeah. yes so, i understand yeah yeah okay. yeah so get on it get, okay. get on it all right <laughs> all right well nice to meet you good luck yes. i appreciate it thank you very much uh -huh. bye now bye-bye